Hey everybody, welcome to episode 42 of Estate Planning TV. I'm your host, Christopher Small, and this is the internet's most passionate show about estate planning. What's up everybody? Hopefully you're having a great day, week, month, quarter, year, everything. Um, hopefully your estate planning needs have been met. They probably haven't. If you're watching the show, you could just be a friend or a family member trying to show me some love. Thank you if you are. I need it. It's welcomed. Thank you. Um, but today we're here to talk about something that I get asked all the time. It's going to be kind of a shorty but a goodie, I think. And, you know, when it comes to... Um, when it comes to trust and it comes to your assets and it comes to your family and it comes to your money, uh, there are a lot of difficult situations that can arise out there and we can all sort of foresee them and think about them and, and, and try to guard against them. But at the end of the day, you really are putting your trust into someone um, to take care of your stuff after you die. And that's what I want to talk. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little bit of a cold. I'm not editing out the coughs, so I apologize if I hurt your ears. Uh, but today I want to talk about how much power does the personal representative of your estate actually have? Um, I actually get asked this question a lot from people who have who have had loved ones pass away and now they're in the middle of a probate. I also get asked this question from clients who are creating their estate plan and are sort of concerned or just want to make sure that they're naming the right person. So here's the, here's the now I'll give you the legal answer, answer and I'll also give you the sort of the real world answer to this question. So the legal answer is the personal representative has in many ways very limited powers, powers that are specifically outlined in your will or in the statutes, you know, in the laws uh, for what they can do. And, and at the end of the day, what they really could do is a, gather up all of your assets, right? So take all your cash and put it in a, in a state bank account to get your house, get your cars, get your um, retirement accounts, your investment accounts, sort of get all those put together, pay off all of your bills, right? So find out who says they that you owe them money and then determine if they're a good, um, um, a good creditor or not and then pay those bills. And then at the end of that, then distribute the assets either according to the will or uh, according to the laws, you know, set out by the state. So those are sort of the, the powers that they have in general. So they don't have any power to sort of make any executive decisions like, oh, Nancy has too much money, so Nancy doesn't get her share from the will, or, oh, I don't like Joe, Joe shouldn't get his share, or even, you know, um, you know, um, William, just trying to think of somebody's name, which it took me a long time, which is weird. William, you know, um, um, William was a real jerk, and, uh, you know, I think maybe he took some money sometime, although I can't prove it, so I'm just going to cut him out. Uh, the personal representative is really not allowed to do that. They have to follow the rules. They have to follow the will. They have to act according to the will. They have to do what the will says, what the rules say, regardless of whether or not they think it's fair, or regardless of whether or not they, they want to do it or not. They're supposed to just do it, right? But... In the real world, things aren't as cut and dry. So um, in the real world, the PR, although they have a lot of authority and they have a lot of responsibility, they also often act without a lot of oversight. So there's a, a tremendous level of trust that needs to be placed in the person that you name as the personal representative because if they really wanted to, they could clean out the bank accounts. They could um, you know, cook the books. They could not distribute something to someone um, and then you would have to go to court to sort of make that happen, to, to, to resolve those problems and take care of those errors. But it is something that can happen. So um, the truth is, if you name the right PR, all they can do is sort of follow the rules. Do what they're told and do it to the best of their abilities. Do it um, the best that they can. I mean, sometimes they get put in difficult places and have to make hard decisions. But... If you have the right person that's doing the right thing, that's really all you can ask for. Uh, if you pick the wrong person, somebody that's not trustworthy, somebody that doesn't have your best interest in mind or your family's best interest in mind, then things can get a little haywire. And uh, so uh, it is important to choose the right person. If you if you have issues or questions about that, you know, obviously we can always talk to you about that. 
Um, but nevertheless, I think it's important to have someone uh, appointed, someone named. You know, so if you don't have a will, if you don't have an estate plan, you really should consider putting something together so that things go according to the way that you want, not to the way according that the the, the state of Washington wants. And um, so you can get everybody everything that you want them to and protect yourself if you're ever involved in an accident and all kinds of other fun stuff so um, I, I think that's it for today you know um, answer the question if you have follow-up questions you can leave a comment below you can email me Chris at CMS law com you can call me 206 659 1512 I almost gave you my cell phone number right there that would have been the phone that ring off the hook um, you have a Facebook page you can just do whatever you want send me a letter it's up to you all right but all, as always thank you for your time i really appreciate it i hope this helps and i will talk to you again soon see ya